everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me. So I thought I'd come and share how to make this um, fun, uh, what am I going to call it, um, slide and reveal, <laughs> sounds better than it is, uh, slide and reveal card which is perfect as a card to give to somebody for whatever reason or you can convert it and use it in your journals, it'd be great on a cover, it'd be great as a, um, in a, on a page, on a flip. Um, or stick it in an envelope and send it to a friend. So it's a standard um, UK size card, there we go, tenfold, um, but it's just got a little added slide and reveal. So this section here slides to reveal a little section where you can write a hidden message or note, okay, and then it will slide back down. Okay, now I've made this without the need for any dies, um, so let's get started. So you're going to need some quite sturdy cardstock, that's why I like to use craft card, because it always feels like it's a little bit more sturdy. But, you know, use what you've got. Um, so we're going to create the tentfold base first of all, by cutting on the short side. Okay, if you're in um, outside the UK and you've got different size A4, just cut it to your standard size and adapt the sizes um, as you go. Okay, so that's that. And then you're going to score it on the long side at 5 and 7 eighths and that will give you your temp fold. Okay, let me just grab my scoring tool. Take that tool out so it doesn't fall on the floor. So there you go, that's your easy base. Now whilst you've got this, you can, unless you've got an off cut, if you've got an off cut then use that um, because this could make another card base. If not then you need to cut a piece to five and three quarters on the long side and then we're going to cut it on the short side to four. Okay. Set that aside because that's going to be for your front um, frame. So I've already gone ahead and I have cut my white layers. Let me just move my trimmer. So you need two of these. Each one needs to measure four inches by five and three quarters. I've inked them with vintage photo. I just need to, because this is quite sturdy card, just need to give it a really good score. Okay, and we're going to stick one of these on the front and one inside. Alright. If you're interested in the images that I'm using today, because this is a stamp free card using a digital card kit that I created, the link for the card kit is in the description box below and along with the purchase of the card kit you get another 10 different cards as well as this tutorial you'll get another 10 different photographs of the cards that I've created for you to follow along with okay and instructions for two of them that need measurements right so that's that one and then we're going to stick inside for writing or journaling so um, I developed this kit because I thought you could make your standard greetings cards, thank you cards, but also adapt it to make journaling cards as well. So it's got kind of like a double use. I call it double bubble. <laughs> double bubble. Okay, lay that in. Now that's a very small increment. I've only done one eighth of an inch um, because I wanted to take away just some of the craft because there's a lot of it um, so you know line it up take time and line it up neatly okay just give that another scar okay so then what we need to do is take one of our off cuts got one here and we need to cut this to um, I can't remember what have I cut it to three and a half by five yes Trim her back out. So this needs to be five on the long side, three and a half on the short side. OK. 
Okay. Now you don't need to bother inking the edges of this one because you're not going to see the edges. It's going to be within the frame so you're not going to see it. So then I took another image from my card kit and I cut this one out which is the lovely three butterflies with a vintage photo frame round. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to ink it. And this is just on standard copy of paper, this one. Okay, just gently. And then we're going to just put it to one side because um, I like to add the layers when I've got it slid inside the mechanism so that I know exactly where to place it. So just put that to one side. We're going to construct the frame of the card. So take your frame. Now if you've got any fancy embossing folders then this would be a great time to emboss this frame to give it a little bit more of an attractive look. Um, but I'm keeping it basic for those that don't have dies, cutting machines etc. So to create this frame you will cut a piece of card, We cut the one that we cut out earlier and we cut that to, what did we cut it to? Uh, 4 by 5 and 3 quarters. So to create your frame just turn it um, on the back, Craft has got like, well mine has got a lighter and a darker side and I want the darker side out and all you need to do is measure half an inch, ruler and pencil, old fashioned style, half an inch, half an inch, okay, and draw yourself a frame on all four sides, okay, which will then give you a hole, which obviously you will cut out, so half an inch all the way around, super simple, and if you've got a trimmer where you can um, stop and start and you can see the measurements, use your trimmer. If not, I'll give you a tip in a minute. I'm not going to cut it all out on camera because uh, if I do it wonky then I'll, I'll look a nana. <laughs> Take your time. Um, so if you don't have a trimmer like mine, so mine has, um, it's got like a little line there so I can see and it's got the measurements. Um, down here as well and across here so I can see what I'm doing if you don't have that then you can cut it with a cutting blade um, make sure that you use uh, quite a thin ruler and try your best to keep to the lines I'm not very good at cutting um, straight with blades so another way you can do it watching your fingers is to just cut corner to corner which creates kind of a, an opening um, which you can then go, you can then open those, this car, that blade's blunt, <laughs> that was another reason I didn't want to do it on camera, so my blades are blunt. Um, so then you can open those flaps obviously and you can get in with a pair of scissors and just cut it out, okay? I've already done mine, blow Peter style. <laughs> So here's my frame. So what we're going to do is make sure you've got your card the right way. We are going to use some foam strips. If you don't have foam strips that are already cut, you can get foam tape or foam dots and you trim them up with an old pair of scissors. Don't use your best scissors because you'll get sticky residue. So what you want to do with this is, if you turn it over and where you've drawn your squares, okay, at the top, you just want... Um, a small strip there and a small strip there then we're going to layer the bottom fuller and we're going to layer on the outside edge of the left hand side of it okay so that's the left hand side so let me just write an L on there so that I don't forget and stick my strips on the wrong side because <laughs> uh, it will I will do it so on the left side you just literally Grab your strips, let me just move that out of the way and you run it right from the top and stay as close to the edge as you can but don't go over or else you'll see it right from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay. If you do get sticky residue on your scissors very carefully clean them with some rubbing alcohol. 
okay and then we're going to go straight across the bottom as well is that long enough no I'll grab another one so this is the bottom so I'm going all the way across the bottom okay and I'm going to do two layers and I'm doing two layers because that I've, because I've measured everything within an inch of its life so that it looks nice and it stops the card dropping down too far okay when it's in the in the frame okay so there's another one okay so cover that bottom layer there and then on the right side so when you've got it turned over that's the right okay on the right side you only want it in the top so when it's turned over it's now on your left <laughs> you've got that little square there and you just want a small piece just from the corner to the edge of where you've drawn that square when you were forming your frame okay so it's about half well, it's half an inch you only need half an inch there okay right all will become apparent so now give that all a press remove your tape you know the backing I'll go quiet when I'm concentrating so don't worry <laughs> So then just do remind yourself that the one with the full strip is the left and that's the right and that's the bottom. Double check that you've got your card the right way up and I'm only saying that because I've done it myself where I've put it on upside down. Okay, then this frame needs to layer on the white card, not to the edge of your craft card base. It wants to sit right up against the edge so you're just covering the white. And I've measured that so that it fits perfectly, so that you've just got that little kind of a frame on your... I've not stuck mine on straight. Just a minute. So that you've got a, you know, a small increment and it just gives the illusion of even more um, definition or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Give it all a good press. Okay. So now at this point, this is where you want to slide in the piece that you made. And this is just to determine where you're going to stick your image. So slide it in and make sure it goes right to where it will butt up against the strips. Okay. And then you can start and you can layer up with your images. Um, you can obviously layer that with paper behind if you want. I didn't on mine because I, I like to try and keep things minimal supplies um, for people okay and then this is going to go here I'm leaving myself a small gap uh, a bigger gap at the bottom than I am at the top because I'm going to put my sentiment there okay so this is where I'm going to center my image now okay so I do it whilst it's in there all right now um, we're going to add the sentiment and I've got um, one from my kit, I've just chopped out, it's just on copy of paper and I've got one of these little metal frames, these have come from AliExpress, cheap as chips, paid about, I don't know, 70 pence for uh, about 20 and then I've added the tiny little brads which I buy from the range, they're like a pound for a bag full Okay, so I'm just going to layer my frame over there to see if that makes sure that when I've got it flush that there's no of the white paper protruding, which there is, so I'm just going to trim it. Okay. So, just a little bit more there. And a tiny sliver there. Okay. So then I'm just going to ink this because it's on a white background. I left them on a white background so you can ink them whatever colour you want. So I'm just very lightly going over it with tea stain, which is the um, Ranger Tim Holtz Distress Ink. Just very lightly. 
just so that it's just to take some of the glary white away it's not anything else you don't need to ink the edges because you're not going to see them then you want to glue this on now if you don't have metal frames what you can do is you can cut this a lot neater okay make sure the edges are straight and then layer it on some black cardstock or some more craft black would be nice because it'll stand out so you would just cut that neat layer, layer it on some black cardstock and cut around it so that you've got a small black border so that's an alternative if you don't have any of the um, metal pieces okay so again I'm keeping my card in here I'm holding it central so I can get my sentiment central okay then get my metal piece now I'm gonna have to use glossy accents to glue this on you can use hot glue but I find it bulky so we're gonna use glossy accents um, which way up is it uh, that way is it I don't remember which way around these are meant to go that way I think I don't suppose it matters because we're not going to be sliding anything in or out it's just going to be fixed okay then lay that over the top and that just fits and it says just a note and then you're going to need to hold that for a while um, to make sure it dries with the glossy accents it does take a few minutes to just settle so if mine comes off halfway through the video it's because it's not dried properly <laughs> right so for the sliding uh, part to make it slide up and down let me just see if I can get this to just hold I'm just going to set that to one side now I've used a whale tail punch if you don't have one um, just cut yourself a shape, it doesn't really matter ok, so I've folded it in half giving it a good squeeze and then fold it the other way and then I've cut it in half, we don't need all of that alright, give it an ink Okay, now we're going to need a strip of craft card, well any card, it doesn't really matter. Um, let me just think, is that going to be long enough? Have I got a longer piece? I haven't. This will do. So you want um, a piece of craft card now, just cut a, quite a long strip at one inch to start with. Okay, and I'm doing mine at one inch because I do believe that is the width of the whale tail. Okay, so this measures at the moment the length of it was it's an off cut, it's about six. Okay, it's better to have it too long than too short because you can trim it after, but it needs to be a minimum of uh, five or six inches. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to glue the whale tail onto the end of there. So anything will do if that's approximately one inch, you know, you could use a circle uh, punch or you can just cut yourself anything. You just don't want it too big is the basic principle. Okay. And that will just stick on there. I just need to wait for that to dry and make sure it's on there straight. Otherwise your mechanism when it slides up and down will be on the wonk. So just need to give that a minute to dry. Come on dry. Right, so then what you want to do is grab two pieces of your scrap card that you've been using. Okay. Have them so they're even and then you need to uh, what do you need about you're probably going to need the width of the card there okay and then 
and then just wrap it around the width of the card. That's just easier than coming up with loads of funky score measurements. So what I've done, I've left a small increment there. Now if you want to measure it, it should be about a quarter of an inch, yeah. So it's about a quarter of an inch. Then I've just wrapped around to bend two thicknesses of the same card that I've been using, okay? And then just give it a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a squeeze, bit of a crease. And then you know that that is going to fit around the frame that you've created easily with room to move. Because that little uh, bump that you've made there is equivalent of two thicknesses of card. Okay. So then you need to remove. This will pull out easily. I just need to be careful of my metal frame. And I just need to measure how much I need. So it's going to roughly be there, so I'm just going to cut it roughly there. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's not exact, doesn't matter if it's not right up to the edge of the card. Just don't cut it way short. Okay. Then very carefully, because that's probably still wet, it will slide back in. Just lift the top part up and just be gentle, okay? And then just hold that in position with your thumb and then in here you've got the opening. So slide that in there and in the back of your card front like so. And at this point this is where you want to determine where you want this part to go, okay? Um, you don't want it too high up because it's going to lift this up and down. If you have it too high up, it's not going to move very far. But you don't want it too far down because you don't want it um, covering up your, too much of your butterfly. You don't want it going on, on there. Okay, so we want it about there. Just lift it up a little bit. Where did I have the other one? About there. Right, I've just remembered another step before I start. I added a fancy brad to mine. So I'm just going to do that now. So I've got my squashy mat, I've got my perky tool, which was cleverly designed by Tanya O'Keefe, <laughs> one of my UK crafty friends. So I'm going to poke a hole, meh, roughly in the middle. I'm not measuring it, I'm doing it by eye. I've got wonky eyes, so if it's not in the middle, so, so me. Okay, right, let's bob that away. And then I had these lovely brad scent. Um, and it just adds just a little bit of something pretty. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to be dis absolutely distraught when they're all done. I'm going to have to go on the hunt and get myself some because they're lovely. So I'm just bobbing that through. And it just adds, uh, obviously, something pretty. Bend them back. Give it a good squeeze. Okay. And now this will help me because I know that when I did my other one I had the point of that kind of diamond by the wing tip of the wing of the butterfly. Okay. So get it in, but don't have it in too snug. Okay? Otherwise it won't slide. So just a tiny bit out. Okay. Alright, like so. But don't have that part there pushed really tight against the edge of there. You just want a little bit of a gap. Um, there's no precise measurement, but just imagine it's going to move up and down. So you just need to not have it really tight. Okay. So then again, I'm just going to hold there and I'm just going to lift this frame out of the way. Okay. So I'm having it about there. So now I can put some glue on here. Now just at this point, be really careful you don't splodge glue on the frame or on the back of your card. So keep your glue, try and keep your position, keep your glue. If you're really, really worried, what you can do is draw a very faint pencil line. What's that? <laughs> Get off. A very faint pencil line under there so that if you slip you remember where you're going because you'll be able to rub it out. I'm not gonna because I'm a bit of a rebel. 
Okay, so I'm trying to keep that glue in the centre and I'm even going to leave it for a minute to start and go tacky so that I don't spread glue all over because we're working in a constricted area. <laughs> that sounds fancy. In it just means that when I did my sample, I got glue everywhere, so I know to be careful. Okay. <laughs> right, so that'll be tacky now. So if I just press, no, I'll just lift it. Okay, carefully, carefully, carefully. Right, I'm just going to hold it on the edge of the frame. I'm going to carefully lift my card up. Okay and over this bit okay. and then I'm going to have it I'm going to centre that gently I've used wet glue so I've got wiggle room that's down as far as it will go so that it's up against there and I can press and hopefully it's not stuck to the back or to the frame okay give that a press Give it a chance to dry. Don't move it or see if your mechanism works. Just wait until it's dry. Because at the end of the day, if it's stuck, um, if you've stuck it to the back of your card, what you can do is very carefully shove a thin ruler or a piece of card down the back and free it before, you know, and then when you lift it up. If your card stock is gluey, use a glue eraser. If it looks too much of a mess, just Put another matting layer over it, it'll be fine. Okay, there's always a way around if you make a mess of something. Trust me, I've been doing this for years, making a mess of things, I mean. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some foam tape on here. Okay, let me just assess where it is. So by adding the this, just a quarter of an inch over there, it means that this line here is where I can put my tape. Okay. Just make sure if you use a different shape to me that you're giving yourself room, okay? So just, you know they say you measure once, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, you want all that going on. You need to be careful. And I'm only saying because I've done this card about three times this morning, trying to work out the measurements so that it, you know, so that it works nicely. So I'm not an expert, I just know what I'm on about. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we can give that a press. Now we can remove the backing on that foam tape. Now you're going to need foam tape. Not You can't just glue it straight to there. And the reason you can't just glue it straight to there and you need some kind of foam tape. If you don't have foam tape, use um, dimensional foam that you make foameranian flowers out of, or foameranian, however they say it. Or even just layer up some scrap chipboard. But you need the same dimension there as you've got on your frame. Okay, so whatever you've used... To give dimension to your frame, you need the same thickness on there. Okay, otherwise it, it just won't work, it won't attach. So then hold your thingy in place like so and then attach that. Okay, and that is your sliding mechanism. And you can write your hidden message there. Okay. Ta-da! And from this point forward, then it's just about decorating. So if you're lucky enough to have any, I mean, it's beautiful just like that. It's lovely. But if you have any stamps or washi tape, you can just go that little step further and add some stamps and maybe some washer. Okay? So there you go. There is your sliding, slide and reveal. <laughs> Call it slide and reveal. Um card uh, which can also be used in your journals all right i hope that's helped and um, the link for the kit and the photos and instructions for uh well photos for 10 other cards and instructions for two is over on my coffee and the links in the description box below along with the link for my facebook group where i have just shared another freebie today I share freebies every friday you're more than welcome to come and join Come and say hello. Thanks for watching. What's that? Take care. Have a fab weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.